Hello, welcome to CSC Format Basics. I'm CJ Wong, your Science and Engineering Liaison Librarian at Merrimack College. In this video, you will learn why and how to create citations in CSC Format. First of all, you might be wondering what are citations? Well, citations are a way for you to reference the materials, ideas, and knowledge base that you are using as you are working on your paper or lab report. Citations are a way to acknowledge the work of others while at the same time you're putting your new work and your own ideas within the context of what has already been done. There are various ways to cite sources. You may have already learned MLA in your first year writing class or APA in a health sciences or psychology class. Today we'll focus on the CSE style. Most science uses the CSE style, which is a name year or a number system. CSE stands for Council of Science Editors. The group started as the CBE, or Conference of Biology Editors, in the 1950s, and they published a style manual called Scientific Style and Format, the CSE Manual for Authors, Editors, and Publishers that is currently in its eighth edition. We have print and online versions available at McQuaid Library. The important thing to remember about citations is that they must include enough information for someone else to be able to find the article. Here is an example of a CSC and citation that you might find included in the references section of a scientific paper. The first item you see is the author's names. The order is based on how they are listed in the paper, not alphabetical. Note that the last name is listed first and then there is one or two initials denoting the author's first and middle names. Next, you will see the year the article was published and then the title of the article. You will then see the title of the journal, which many times will be abbreviated to save space. Finally, you'll see the volume number, the issue number, and lastly, the page numbers. You may also come across a citation for a book, and it is useful to be able to distinguish a journal article from a book article in a citation so you'll have an easier time tracking down that reference. Notice how this citation looks different in that you can see the word in telling you that the article is in a book and then it tells you the editors and location of publication. Let's now talk about how you can create your own list of references in CSE format. You want to ensure that each article citation is included in your paper as an in-text citation for it to appear in the end references. You want to list the sources that you used in your paper in alphabetical order by the first author's last name. If there are less than 10 authors listed on the paper, all authors should be included, but if there are more than 10 authors, you can abbreviate it with et al. The format for in-text citations differs a bit from APA format or other formats you may be familiar with. You basically are including the name and the year of publication and the comma between is optional, so you can decide, but keep it consistent throughout your paper. If you have a citation with two authors, you want to include both names with the word and written between them. If there are more than three authors, you'll use the first author's last name and then et al, period, and the year. Et al is an abbreviation of the Latin et ali, which means and others. If you are citing more than one paper by the same author with different years, list dates in chronological order. For example, Wong, 2003, comma, 2006. If you are citing two papers from the same year and the same author, then use an A-B system to differentiate. For example, Wong, 2003A, comma, 2003B. If you are citing more than one article in a particular place, in other words, referencing the same point, put a semicolon between the citations and list chronologically. So that might look something like this. First citation, semicolon, second citation, semicolon, third citation, semicolon, and so on. You can use RefWorks to format your end citations or reference list for you by using the Create Bibliography function. Please see a librarian if you need help setting up a RefWorks account. How to effectively use citations is also a bit tricky. You will want to paraphrase, not quote. So you could say something like this. According to Wong, 2014, the best way to utilize in-text citations is by paraphrasing effectively. Or you could say something like, paraphrasing is an art that biology students should pick up, and then you should put the citation at the end of the sentence followed by a period. So Wong, 2014, period. 
You may want to cite something that is cited in another paper, but you don't have the original paper. First, try to track down the original citation. Ask a librarian for help if you're having problems with that. And if we can't get it in time, then you can use this method. Wong, 2004, as cited by Smith, 2014. You know you will need to include citations in your introduction when you review the literature and also in your discussion section when you are putting your work into the larger body of knowledge, but you may be wondering if you need to include citations in your materials and methods section. Unless you made up every method of your project, you'll need to cite where you came up with the laboratory procedures. You can find the original papers that the procedures came from and use those. You may also need to cite your lab manual like this. Author, year, title of lab exercise, course number, department, university. Hopefully you are feeling more confident about using CSC format to write your laboratory reports. Please stop by the Research Center at any time if you need additional help or clarification. You can also email me directly at wongc at merrimack.edu or phone me at extension 5350. Good luck writing your lab report.